Hey guys, it's Danny here, back with a new update about the progress of the factory diorama build. Well, it's been quite some time since the last video, I think it's almost a month has been gone. So uh, I apologize if I made you guys wait. Uh, there's quite a lot has been happened. So as we left it off last time, I told you guys I'm going to build the Panther Aus FD. This will be parked outside of the factory like they are ready tanks. Uh, ready to be transported to the battlefield. So I have three of these bad boys and I did manage to complete all three of them. So this was a really good kit. To be honest, I really enjoyed it for Mang. It does gives you quite a few different options that you can do. Uh, and I'm going to show you uh, which ones because I kind of try to utilize all of the options as I want to represent all of the Panthers and all of the options that has been been uh, you know provided or they have used so yeah kit is really good uh, not many photo edge parts uh, it really fits well I did enjoy this better than building the the Jack Panthers so yeah it is really good uh, so what I did is I showed you guys previously that I did get the this conversion kit for Meng which is basically just the turret and the barrel and it's all covered with a tarp so it does say it's for travel mode um, it only goes with this kit together so it does kind of made the build quite easy because I didn't really have to do anything with the turret it was full only thing I needed to put it's the commander cupola that's all I need to put up there everything else was basically in one piece so it does kind of speed up the process a little bit so yeah so this is what I've been working on so as you guys can see we did all the jack panthers with the conversion we did the platform wagons we did the train and I did all the three panthers with uh, the, the traveling uh, turret uh, conversion and I got two more of these left so this is probably gonna be the next one what I'm gonna start so this is also gonna be parked next to these three tanks outside of the factory so I'm gonna have five tank out there so yeah this is probably gonna be the next one so I can complete all of the outside vehicles will be done and then we can start to focus uh, inside the factory and on the building himself so so yeah, so this is it. Uh, this is what I've been working on in the past month. So let me just show you guys what happened. Oh, and also, yeah, so I didn't use the tracks. As I mentioned previously, I didn't like the mag tracks. So I did use the, uh, these Ryefield model uh, Panther workable track links, uh, which again, I quite like it. It's very simple and easy to assemble. It gets done pretty quick. So yeah, so this is what I used. So here it is, guys. Here it how it looks. So this is it. This is all the three tanks completed. So as you can see, all the barrels and the turret, it's covered with this nice tarp, nice little wrinkles on it and everything. So it did came out really well. I tried to keep all of the three tanks a little bit different. So as you can see, there's both of the hatches open here. Here is only one hatch open on the, on the, on the right side. And here is only the left side hatch open, the right side one is closed. So yeah, just to keep it different so they not all look the same because the kind of tarp kind of makes them look the same. So the other thing I did, uh, they do give you the option. So you got three options that you can do. Uh, so as you can see, you can, there's a snorkel there so you can cover it fully or you can get the snorkel cover open so you can see, see the, the snorkel but it's not been deployed or you can have the cover open and the snorkel fully deployed. So, and yeah, so the other thing I liked, they do provide you with like a photo edge, like the command tank uh, antenna. So I did utilize that as well, just to, you know, just to keep a variety of the tanks. I mean, it, it is really good. I really liked it. I enjoyed the kit. It is obviously the first version of the Panthers. There is no uh, forward machine gun mounted on the front, on the ball, as usually you guys have it on the, usually they had it on the, on the later versions. But yeah, I enjoyed it very much. So I think it looks really good. And uh, yeah, it is pretty cool. So they also give you the little uh, bullets for the machine guns and it's just hanging in the magazines well it's, you guys not really 
seeing it from there. But yeah, so there's lots of little options that uh, they do provide. So I think it is a brilliant uh, kit for Manx. So it's quite affordable as well. So I definitely highly recommend it to anybody who want to build uh, the initial Panther version. So, so yeah, so this is how we look. This is how we are at so far. So tomorrow will be 10 weeks that I have started this uh, project. So today is the 69th day. Uh, and so far in this 69th day, I managed uh, to complete 10 models. So we have the three platform wagons carrying the three Jack Panthers. We got the locomotive, the dump locomotive pulling them. And we also have these three Panther Aus FDs gonna park outside of the factory. So yeah, so this is it. This is what I've been working on. Uh, I was quite kind of doing a lot of things at once. So that's why it took a little bit longer than a usual, but, um, but it did get done in the end. So let me just put this away and then I'm going to show you guys what else I was working on in this past month. So let me just get rid of this one. So as you guys, as I saw, showed you guys previously, uh, this book. Um, I did have a couple of pictures that I really liked. Example, all these little gear stands that uh, the, all the gearboxes and everything is, uh, is standing on. However, there is no really kit where you can purchase anything like this. And one of my subscribers, uh, Vasily, uh, we became really good friends and we started to talk back and forth, uh, emailing to each other. And he kindly offered me that he will be able to assist me to create these uh, things that I require uh, a true like 3D, you know, 3D drawing and designing. And then, uh, and then he will be able to print it for me. So he was very kind. So uh, he did go ahead and he created a lot of things for me. Uh, so he created the file and then I said to myself, you know, like I don't want to keep uh, bother him and I keep asking him to print more and more and more. So I did invest myself in uh, Elegoo Mars uh, 3D printer. Um, it's really, really good. Be honest, guys. I think it's very affordable price these days. I came across on eBay for £85, which is really nothing to have a 3D printer at home. Well, the 3D design and the graphic side, uh, that's, <laughs> that's another thing. That's something that you really need to learn. So I'm, I'm, I haven't really tried it yet, but luckily I have good friend Vasily who will be, who was able to help me and then create these things for me. So yeah, so I did ask him to create these, um, a little um, uh, gearbox stand for me. And uh, this is what he did, for, did. So this is how it looks. This is just one of them. As you can see, once you put in a 3D printer, it comes up with all the support poles and everything. So those has to be breaking off uh, when you, you have, needs to be cleaned when you're gonna be using it. So this is just the version how it comes out from the 3D printer. So Vasily's company is carpet models okay so if anybody carpet monster models so if anybody's looking for them you guys can find it find him under that name he's got really interesting things uh, that he can uh, make uh, so yeah he also did another different ones oh sorry about this so this is a different style uh, stand that you can use as you can see so this is a wooden one and this is another wooden version. It doesn't have the support between as the previous one, as you can see. So that's the difference between the two. But the design, it is similar. or It's almost, it's the same, I think. Yeah, even the size is the same. So yeah, so this is one, two. And he also did one of these big ones. So this is the, the ones that you can see on the pictures, which is really, really cool. I mean, it's gonna really enhance my diorama a lot. And uh, yeah, it is a really, really nice design. I probably have to do this again because I didn't put any support while I was printing. So these little ones, they didn't really came out very well. So it's gonna be a redone later on, but I mean, it is pretty cool. And here is the same with a smaller version has been printed. So as you guys can see, they had different ones as well. See the, 
I don't know how much you guys can see it, but the legs are different. So this is not the same. They all kind of different versions. However, they all served the same purpose. So yeah, so it's really cool. I'm really happy. He's really kind that he made all this for me. So, and he didn't stop here. So this is just one bit that he made. And he also sent me over some uh, really cool stuff. This is like, can be like paint jars or like oil cans or things like this. Again, this is the same. This is little, little oil cans or fuel cans, which can be used. Obviously it will be a factory. So there will be a lot all over the place. Again, little oil cans with a cap on. So. Yeah, the design is just really, really good. So now I got a 3D printer so I can print as much as I like. So yeah, so these, again, a couple of them that he sent over and he also, I showed him this picture. Let me just show you guys, where is it? Because a couple of page over. Yeah, so I showed him this picture and I said to him like, it would be really cool if I can have like a shelf, like a big shelf and um, we'll figure out in the end that all those little things up there, those are like all ball bearings for the, for the tank wheels. So I told him it would be really cool to like recreate this little scene with all these little parts and, and shelves and ball bearings on top. So he, he did go ahead and he did created um, a shelf for me. So let me just show you guys. So obviously these are the, support for the for the shelf so it's like kind of like the like a brackets thing so you gotta cut these little things out you gotta glue them in place and then you can basically build up a shelf and then you have all these little support poles which is kind of goes into those little ones so yeah it is really really cool so again now i can have a big factory shelf and i can put all kind of goodies on top he also give me little like little crates that can go on the, on the shelf and that can be a lot of the parts can be put in. So that is really useful and, and it looks great as well. And here it is. So he did create all those ball bearings, uh, as you can see. So yeah, so I printed a lot out of these. So all different kind of structures and there's like single ones and double ones and and like a full pack of it. So yeah, there is a lot and I can stack all this up on the top of the shelf. And then once I've done that, then this is how it all going to look. So it's not been glued on, so I try not to drop it but let me just get the lights out for you guys so as you can see this is what we are going for so with all the little crates and ball bearings on top and the big shelf and everything so yeah it is gonna be really look gonna look really really good once it's all done and i'm gonna have multiple shelves and everything so all the little goodies on top so yeah Big thank you goes out to Vasily and thank you ever so much for, for creating all this for me. It is really going to enhance the, the look of the diorama. So yeah, they are really, really, really cool. So let me just put these away and uh, I will going to show you guys more stuff. And I also did ask him that um, it would be cool to have like a, a company sign a company logo on the front of the building and if he would be able to create one for me as well uh, is it possible to create one and he did made this one for me so i don't know how much you guys can see it so yeah this is it so it does say the name of the company and then the logo so this is gonna be look really good uh, just right above the door so yeah so this is one and uh, I also asked him to create a circular one. So this is like a little plaque. So this is gonna go on the front of my diorama on the wood. So this is gonna be, again, a little, it's gonna just gonna enhance the look of it. So everybody know, will know what, what factory I'm building. So, and then 
it will be clear but it is really good the details are really nice and and it just this this printer uh, it's really prints really well so yeah definitely recommend to everybody to get one you know if you're into modeling and things and also there's lots of files that you can download for free and if you got good friends like Vasily then he can help you create good stuff so so yeah this is another sign so i got one sign in the building on the front and then this sign will be on the diorama as a plaque on the front so yeah this is really cool and he also made this one which is really cool as well so i don't know how much you guys can see it so this is this is like a, a drainage cover so it's gonna goes on the, on the floor so yeah I don't know, yeah, there you go, you guys can see it now. So if you're cutting it out, then this is this is the, the final final piece. And obviously once you painted all this and weathered it, then it's gonna look really cool on the on the ground, on the floor. So yeah, so these are the, the man signs uh, that he, he made for me. And um, yeah, so this is about, that was about the 3D printing. So like I said, I was going building the models, doing the 3D printing, doing all kind of things at once, but uh, we are getting there. So also uh, I did show it to you guys previously that I, I uh, used, uh, I talked about the printouts uh, for what I purchased from, um, from Uschi and then this is the the ones that I'm going to use for the inside of the factory also like the ventilation and the doors and uh, the big doors the floor things like this so I did uh, mention this to you guys previously so I did go to the print shop and also I did purchase another one from them so this is this is for like another little factory diorama kind of thing. So the reason I purchased this, it was mainly for the bricks. But then uh, in the end, I decided to, and then many of you have advised that there is better options than, than just to use a printout. So, uh, but what I did use out of this uh, printout, it was the floor. So I, I showed you guys the, on the, uh, the other one that will be the inside of the factory. And then I thought that I can use these ones on the outside of the factory. So what I did is, as you can see, unfortunately, there's only two full square in the middle of the, of the page. Everything else is like half square or like a quarter. So I did cropped uh, these two and there's another two somewhere as well. Yeah, and I did crop these two as well. And I just created a big pattern uh, for like, I think 80 by 160 centimeters. So it's quite a big. And that's what I took uh, to the print shop to, to, to get it printed. So I didn't want it to print it on a shiny paper. I asked them if there's any option to, to print it on the, on the matte one. So otherwise I would have to use a lot of uh, matte varnish to, to get the shine uh, disappear. So I said, if I can save some varnish, then maybe I can get it sorted in this way. So I did go to the print shop, as I mentioned. So here is a couple of printouts uh, that I have uh, done. So let me just show you guys one by one. So yeah, as you can see, so this is the door. So this is just one side of the door. Then I did uh, the double doors together. So I did split up the doors because I thought there will be, some doors will be open, some doors will be closed. So if I wanna have these big red doors open, then I gotta, gotta cut it in the middle and I'm gonna use them separately. So yeah, I have this side, I got the other side as well somewhere. I got all these uh, smaller doors that I showed you guys previously. So, so yeah, these ones uh, get done as well. And uh, also did print it out. There, there's lots of stuff. Let me show you guys. Also did uh, a section like this. So this will be in the platform behind the, the train. So the the top of the diorama will be will be here, and then this will be basically this will be the the the, the diorama. And then this will be the trains, the train tracks will be here. So the trains will be in level with the diorama. So 
Yeah, so I thought that this is, looks really cool with the concrete and all the cables are running through. So that's this will be pretty cool to be to be used on a, as a platform wall on the on 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 the on the diorama. So this will be the edge. Also, did printed the the ventilation. So this is the ventilation. Obviously, it has to be folded in to create a three D. Uh, version of it but uh, the painting and then all the weathering and everything it looks really cool on it so so yeah so this all been printed out went to the print shop and it get it all done so and uh, also I did print it out the the base so this is gonna be the big base for the diorama obviously I'm not able to open it because it's like one meter long but as you guys can see it so yeah so this is gonna be the inside the factory so that's done as well well basically all the prints are done and then let me show you guys the final printout i did this will be the outside of the factory floor so this is it this is the the two squares that i matched and i put it together so I'm not gonna take it out guys it's it's 80 centimeter by 160 but at least you can see what i'm talking about so yeah so this is gonna be the outside factory floor and this is gonna be the inside factory floor so this is how it's gonna be uh, i think the design is really cool it does it does look really good the printouts are very good quality as well and like i said i did ask them to print it in matte so I don't have to mess around with a matte varnish. So yeah, so these are the printouts has been done and uh, there's nothing else to print anymore. So that's all been completed. And now uh, I wanna show you guys how it's gonna look. So just bear me a second, I'm just gonna put these things away. So here is the, the doors, the double doors. So this is how the doors were. And uh, for the double doors, I did glue glue two of them together and I did put the, the the paper on it with just like simple PVA glue. So if you use any kind of printouts, make sure that you kind of like with a black marker, you kind of mark around all the edges just in case if your paper is shorter, then uh, you can cover it with a black marker on the edge and also the printouts, the side of the printout has to be marked with black, otherwise it's white because it's paper. So you don't want any white to be visible at all. So yeah, so this is this is one of the, the doors that, uh, that I did. And also I did uh, with the same door, but with the single ones. So this is the single doors, as you can see, so it's double-sided. So I can keep keep one door open and then I can keep the another door closed. So it does going to look really, really cool once it's done. So yeah, I love the printouts. The re rescaling, it, it worked out really well. So it, it perfectly matches the, the size of the wood. So I didn't have to cut off anything or it, it's a perfect match. So. Yeah, it's very easy to do either in Canva or Photoshop at home. And um, here is the other doors that uh, I showed you guys previously. So this will be the doors for the Annex building. So as you can see, they look really cool. So I did assemble it. As you can see, you got to use lots of little hinges that you can attach to the building and then the door it's actually it does closes so you can decide that you want the door open or you want the door uh, closed. So yeah, both the options are there. So you can have it open and then everything will be in will be visible inside or you can have them fully closed up. So so yeah, so these are the doors. Uh, these little hinges was quite a trick to put on, but uh, I did manage it and I think the way it looks, I think it's really, really, really awesome. So, uh, so yeah, these are the, the things that you can do with uh, little paper printouts and kind of enhance the look of your, your diorama. So yeah, and again, as you can see, double-sided. So I try to mix up a little bit so they will not look the same. However, the only thing what happened, and I want to show you guys, so 
this is how those uh, doors comes. The, the only problem is, unfortunately, I do lose the little doors uh, because that is fully covered. But I did take the doors out, so it's hollow in the middle here. Uh, but I can use those little doors somewhere else maybe, but there is just no way that you can cut this out and obviously it does got like the no smoking sign in there and then the writing so you just wouldn't be able to put this pattern in here to make that all those graphics visible so that's just impossible but but yeah so this is this is how it looks but the only downside I'll show you guys so this is the panel where uh, those doors are gonna go in. So this is how it comes in a kit. I think where they, when they're making the the, through, the the laser cut design, obviously they cutting it like this. And uh, I think it's a bit, uh, they made a mistake. And the reason is because as you can see, it does fit in this way. But once you pop them out of this frame, the doors became smaller. So if I put, so as you can see, all the little hinges got a little place in here. So this is where the hinges will go. So if I take the door and if I just put them in place, it's kind of difficult to do it in the air, but I will try to make it happen for you guys so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So here is where the problem comes. I don't know how can I do it with one hand. See, the doors are does not touching each other so there's like a huge gap in the in the in between so this is a design flow that they did because ideally these doors should be closed fully and it shouldn't be a gap between however because they did it like they designed it like this they kind of forget about this frame and everything that's gonna be excess and it will not be used which is gonna make the whole the size of this smaller. However, what I came up with is this panel, as you can see, there is no design on either side. So obviously the main building will be, will be covered with bricks. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cover this one with bricks as well. And I'm probably gonna make a, like from resin, gonna make like a, a, a bigger extension in here, or, or I'm just gonna put a bigger piece, which is gonna hang out on both sides and I'm gonna do the same here. So the doors will be touching each other in the end. So there will be no gap in between. So yeah, so this is the only problem. I mean, yeah, can't use the doors and the doors are in a wrong size, but again, it is fixable. So it's not the end of the world. So also I did go ahead and, so as you can, as I showed you guys previously, you know, there's nothing on the other end. So I really wanted to have bricks on, on both sides. Uh, some of you have advised me to, to get like an embroidered or braided uh, wallpaper or, or uh, some other options. But in the end, uh, what I came up with is I just went ahead and I casted the whole thing from resin. And also many of you mentioned that it is very thin, so it's not really realistic. So, but this way, if I do put two together, then it does go into, to make it thicker as well. And I will have bricks on both sides. So the casting came out really, really good. All the details has been picked up. So I did go ahead and I did all of the, the main panels. So as you can see, this is another, main panel that I, I uh, that's one of the, the side of the side of the building. So here we go. So even the, the writing, even the writing is, is, is visible. So, so yeah, that's really good. Um, again, there's gonna be a little bit of an issue here. So as you can see, so it is a perfect copy of the, of the factory, the side of the factory, the factory wall. Uh, the only problem is if I mirror this, obviously because I want to use it on the other end, then this is the problem I'm having. So <laughs> as you can see, if you mirror it, then uh, then it's that is it's on the wrong place, obviously. So this one's it probably, I, I will need it to like chop it in pieces to be able to, to, to get it in the right place. And then 
to to put this together in pieces to make sure that I have I have the the bricks everywhere and where it's uh, where it's hollow it should be hollow so not like this so yeah so this is gonna be a challenge again to to cut these pieces and then put them together nicely and then fill up the gaps and the holes but I mean it's not the end of the world and it's it's certainly it's possible to do it but again it is just an extra extra works that need, needs to be done. So, but yeah, the, the casting is done again, so it, it looks good. And here is the third and final piece. So as you can see, so this is the other side of the factory. So with this one, there will be no problem. Thank God for that, because as you can see, the doors are on the same place. So if I flip them around, there will be no issue. There's nothing that need, needs to be cut or anything. And uh, yeah, the thickness is better as well. So yeah, so this is how I'm gonna be the factory. This is how I'm gonna have bricks on each side. So yeah, that was a lot of work creating the molds and building boxes and everything for it, but, but it's all done now. And uh, yeah, as you can see, this is how the, this is how the big factory door is gonna be in, gonna be in. So, yeah, it's gonna looks good once it's it's all ready and it's all assembled. So, I think it's really cool. Uh, I think it does enhance the look of it. Can't wait to see it. You know, all the bricks painted and everything. So, uh, so yeah, this is how the door is gonna be. And yeah, so it's double. So from either side, it's gonna have the same. So yeah, so this is about the, the bricks and the castings and, and the doors and the printouts. And um, what else has happened? Oh yeah, and I received uh, another kit uh, that what I've been waiting for. It came from China. So this is another, another uh, interior kit. So it's uh, a fit full interior. As you can see, came from China, so they don't really look after the parcels. So it's definitely been stepped on a few times or who knows, or crushed, but uh, yeah, but all the all the pieces are intact, nothing is broken. So so yeah, so I have two uh, interior panthers out of the four so far. So I still need to get two more panthers later on. But uh, yeah, I think the next step, what I'm gonna do is I am going to get going the, the, the next, uh, the next uh, two panthers, what's left over uh, for the outside of the factory. So that's gonna be the next project. And once that's completed, then I can start to work on uh, the factory base and then building up the base and then start to put things in place. So, so yeah, so here we are guys. Uh, like I said, it's been 69 days into the build. The stand models has been completed all the printouts, all the castings, everything is ready. So uh, yeah, getting there. So we'll see how long it's gonna take, but I mean, I think it is a good progress of, of get 10 models done in, in, in uh, two months. And uh, yeah, all the casting and printing. And so yeah, I've been doing a lot of things, multitasking in the past couple of weeks, but, uh, but yeah, a lot of progress has been made. So I'm quite happy. And I hope you guys uh, like it as well. And then enjoying these little videos and uh, explanation about how I'm, how I'm going about this project. Okay, so that would be all for today. Uh, I will get back to you guys once the Nada 2 Panther has been completed. So thank you so much again. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. And uh, see you in the next video. Have a good night, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.